Hello everyone and thank you for watching this video. Today we are going to talk about the precision recall curve. Now if you haven't already I encourage you to watch my previous video where I elaborate more on the ROC curve but I will talk about it briefly in this video as well. So we'll start by talking about the ROC and AUC. We'll go on talking about its limitations and then we'll talk about the precision recall curve. Okay, so the ROC curve, what it does is that it plots many thresholds for a given classification model. So we have a certain classification model that has to predict, let's say, 0 or 1. And what it does is that it predicts probabilities. And then for every threshold for these pro probabilities, two parameters are calculated. The first parameter is the true positive rate, also known as recall. The true positive rate is, well, true positives divided by true positives and the false negatives. And what this means in other words is how many out of the positive class were correctly identified. The false positive rate is false positives divided by false positives and the true negatives. So. This parameter, if we would like to say this in words, would be how many instances out of the negative class were incorrectly classified. And again, if you've uh, searched for the ROC curve on Google or something like that, you would probably encounter uh, this curve. And what you see over here is, well, each point represents a different threshold. And then for that threshold, the false positive rate and the true positive rate are both calculated. And the best possible value for a certain threshold is this uh, well point over here where the true positive rate is 1 and the false positive rate is 0. And AUC usually stands for area under the, well, usually the ROC curve, but it doesn't really have to be that. So we use the area under the curve to compare between different models. Let's say this blue line represents a certain model and this orange line represents another uh, model. Then because the area under the orange uh, line is larger than the area under the blue line, that, that would mean that we assume that, well, the, the model represented by the orange line is assumed to be better. Okay, let's go on talking about the limitations of the ROC curve. So the limitations are introduced when we deal with real-world imbalanced uh, data set. Uh, usually, I guess the most common would be in medical cases where you have like a, a certain disease and you have very few people who do have the disease and many more people, much more, who do not have the disease. So the balance between the positive and negative class is not 50-50. Okay, so let, let's, let's understand the limitations through the parameters. Again, there are two uh, parameters. One is just how many out of the positive class were correctly uh, classified, which is the true positive rate. The problematic parameter is the false positive rate. And well, remember, we want this value to be as low as possible. This is a good value. And in a case where we have like a very large negative class, this number over here may be very, very large. And that automatically uh, reduces the value of this uh, false positive rate, of this parameter. Because that almost automatically happens, uh, if we really care about the false positive, then that could be problematic. Imagine, for example, that if you have a false positive, then that could, you know, have bad influence. Um, a good example would be, let's say, for like a medical treatment, which could be like very expensive for that person who really doesn't have the disease, or maybe even a treatment that could potentially harm the person who's treated, like, I guess, uh, chemotherapy and cancer. So you really want to avoid it, but it's almost automatically equal to zero. So what we do is we replace this parameter, and that is where the precision recall curve comes into place. 
So over here, we just switch the parameters. Actually, the parameter recall and true positive rate are exactly the same. So nothing changes over here. What does change is precision. And precision is true positive divided by true positives and the false positive. So to say this in words would be how many instances out of the predicted positives are actually positives. And our previous parameter, the false positive rate, was influenced by the size of the negative class. This value, the precision, is not biased by, is not influenced by the size of the negative class, and that is why it's preferred in imbalanced cases. And again, if you would plot the precision recall curve, you would see, uh, well, we don't have points over here, these are stars, but each star represents a different value uh, for a threshold. And then for that threshold, we calculate the precision and the recall. And well, I would like to emphasize two things regarding this plot. The first one is the 0 0.5 value that we have over here. This is 0 0.5 because what, what I did was I used a balanced data set to plot this uh, uh, well line. And precision is actually how many instances were correctly identified out of the well everything you've predicted and if you've predicted that everything is like the positive class then you would be 50 percent correct in a balanced case but if you are dealing with an imbalanced data set then this value would probably be much lower it's actually the ratio between the positive and negative class and another thing i would like you to notice is that well over here in the precision recall curve, the recall is on the X uh, horizontal axis, while the, in the ROC curve, uh, the true positive rate, which is also recall, is actually on the vertical axis. And that could be kind of confusing, so please pay attention to that as well. Uh, lastly, I would just like to uh, recommend that if you, yeah, if you would want, if you would like to uh, calculate the uh, precision recall curve, then to calculate the value, it's very helpful to use Python sklearns uh, library, uh, which again, the, it has a function, the precision recall curve. Another useful uh, function is the average precision score, which is used to calculate the area under the precision recall curve. Okay, and that's it. Thank you for watching this video. If you've liked it, Please like and subscribe and let me know in the comments below if you have any questions.